We've got eight minutes left on the bike. And one of the things I think about on these longer workouts, whether it's the bike to swim or to run, it's like from hours into one of these workouts, like what if, what if my life depended on this workout? What if every success, every aspiration, every, every objective I've ever put into place like depended on this one workout? When you think of it that way, like shit, it does. Like all these things compound. Every single workout, every single day, every single hour, every single minute, they all matter. You know, your, your success, your aspirations, your objectives, they all depend on it. And every one of these workouts is just one step closer to getting there. That's what this workout is tonight. In preparation and leading into the half Ironman tomorrow. And just under nine weeks out from the full Ironman in November, there's all these little steps. One more minute, one more hour, one more session. They all lead to it and it all depends on it. All right, good morning and welcome to the day of the Half Ironman. So let's talk nutrition really quick because Right now, it's about 7 a.m. and we're gonna start at 9 a.m. So we're going to the lake to swim at 9 a.m. So I have like two hours to adjust some food. Um, I wanna walk you through what my nutrition is pre-half Ironman and then intra-half Ironman. So like, this has been my go-to meal uh, for all my main Saturday bricks and it's just what my body loves. It's actually like my breakfast pretty much every morning. Um, four whole eggs, English muffin, Kerrygold's butter, and like, some sort of jam or jelly. So this combination, this breakfast has been my breakfast every morning of training and especially on, on main brick Saturday. So I know it, like I feel good on it. And give it two hours to digest before swimming, I'll be perfect. Now like intra half Ironman, um, two things. One, this is a combination of uh, cluster dextrin, carb 10, which are, are carb sources, fast gastric emptying carb sources, and then electrolytes. Um, so I'm gonna use Throughout the, the bike, 40 grams of you know carbohydrates in this powder plus electrolytes. So that's one. Um, two, I'm gonna use probably another maybe 40 grams of carbs of just like Gatorade, so pretty much dextrose. And then also I forgot intraflight, so I'll use um, two servings of intraflight, which is branch chain amino acids, taurine, carnitine L tartrate, essentially malate agnetine sulfate, um, so I'll use two scoops of this as well. So this right here is what I'm using on the bike from like powder sources. And also, I'll probably have like you know, one or two bars, here at field bars we're working on right now. So I'll like throw like one or two bars in the back of my tri suit and have these if I, if I want them in the course. So we got pre-nutrition, we got intra-nutrition, and this should carry me through, you know, the 2.4 mile swim, 56 mile bike, and a 13.1 mile run. So, here we go. All right guys, the day and time have arrived the half Ironman. So we got on deck a 1.2 mile swim. And then the way we're working is because we're swimming at Quarry Lake. Uh, there's no place to really ride 56 miles immediately after. So we're gonna get in the truck and we're going to drive to um, Ronald Reagan Boulevard, which is where I've been doing all my riding. Uh, so we'll take like, you know, we'll probably account for 15 minute transition time there, even though we're gonna be driving to the location. So it goes from the 1.2 mile swim to the 56 mile bike to a 13.1 mile run, and we'll be doing the bike and the run in the same location. Um, so this is actually the first time I'm using a swim cap. Let's see, uh, let's talk gear real quick. I got this the swim cap. Ow! Swim cap is, uh, it's snug, I'll tell you that much. Representing USA. We got uh, the Roka goggles I'll be using, and I'm gonna throw these things on in the water. 
Uh, this is the Roka, uh, it's called the Sim Elite. It's essentially like the bottom part of a, a wetsuit. So we're about to hop in here and knock this out. But we have a special guest joining us for this one today. We have the Dakota Meyer. Yeah, here now, we go. Now what? How have you prepared for this event today? I ate Whataburger last night. All right. And I drank water. Well, isn't that the key? If you drink enough of water, <laughs> it should essentially prepare you for anything. For anything, you're right? Going into. I mean, that's what that's what we were taught in the military. Is like just drink water, right? Yep. Anything yeah. that hurts, you drink water and you're fine. Yeah, just drink water, take a knee. So my time that I'm shooting for is about um, six hours. Like that, under six hours is my goal. That's, I would I would love to do that. Um, and then Dakota's gonna be trailing with me. So here we go. two miles time was 37 minutes 20 seconds so next stop will take like a 15 minute transition uh, we have to get in the truck drive to Ronald Reagan Boulevard where we're gonna do the bike and the run and we'll just account for 15 minutes in between uh, the swim and and the bike but 37 20 like I'll take it for 1.2 so feel really good So like I said, uh, we're kind of forced to drive to the next location from the lake, just because like, if you think, like, if I'm doing a, like, uh, an event half Ironman or an event Ironman that's put together, they have like closed roads and it's logistically set up for it. Uh, I couldn't just like go ride bike from Quarry Lake because we're like right outside of the city and just safety for one and then being able to capture this for two, it's difficult. So we're driving to, uh, the one route that I truly trust in Central Texas, which is, like I said, Ronald Reagan Boulevard, uh, and we'll finish everything there. But in regards to the swim, like I'm super happy with the outcome. Like I felt really good. Um, like my breathing was feeling a lot better. I'd say like the swim overall, all of all the events, was for one the most unconditioned thing that I was able to do coming into triathlon training uh, because you know the first time I swam up until a few months ago was years I'd say that the swim has been the one event that I made the most massive improvement on and today it was just like a result and I, I guess it just proved that like I felt solid on that half mile or that not half mile that 1.2 mile swim um, so 37 20 plus 15 minute transition that we're gonna count for and then when we get to the bike it's just all out as fast as possible while pacing ourselves uh, to do the 56 mile ride and the 13.1 mile run. So here we go. Just in time for it to hit 100 degrees here in Central Texas. the Roka triathlon suits and it fits a bit snug but everyone's telling me it's supposed to fit snug you know it's, it's really tight on the arms it's a little tight on the thighs here we go it's game time so we have 56 miles to do and then immediately into a 13.1 mile run my goal is to do about 17 miles per hour and that's what uh, I've been shooting for recently in my training so without further ado, let's go. All right, we are, uh, we're halfway. We're holding a little bit faster than 17 miles per hour. So we got that first hour in. I was like 17, you know, 
So I think it was like 17.5 miles in that first hour. So I'm feeling solid and trying to pace myself in in preparation for the run and just going through liquids like no other. I think we're, we're pushing like 100 degrees right now. So trying to stay hydrated and, and fueled up for for these 13 miles because you'll bake under this heat right now. And the bike is where you 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 fuel up, you get some calories in, some carbs, some electrolytes. It's the best place to set yourself up for that run. So got another 28 miles to go. the best water I've ever had. Oh, that gave me like chills. Wow. I'm just craving water. I'm like so thirsty for water right now. And honestly, it feels so good. I just want to leave it in there and drink all that water. That water tastes delicious. Best water I've ever had. I was actually drinking the water in there. Yeah. All right, bike complete for half Ironman so far today three hours four minutes and uh, now it wants to run so it's a hot one because of the heat what I'm gonna do is um, every like couple miles come back here grab my hat just like ice cold throw it in there and throw my head just to help stay cool eventually I'll probably take the hat off completely just because um, it, it doesn't allow heat to like evaporate off your head, which can make you so warm. And like just not having a hat on, trying to get like a, I need to get one of the things that Terran wears. It's like a headband essentially. But this will help temporarily. Like that feels really, really good. So here we go. We're only, we're only like a little over a quarter in, and it's like, it's not my legs, it's not my breathing, it, it's like, the heat, it made, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. It's the thing, I haven't been exerting myself like to the extreme, it's, it's endurance stuff, but Like, the only time I ever like to throw up from working out is overheated. takeaway from uh, from the run the whole thing essentially the the swim went super smooth I felt great transitioning into the bike felt amazing toward then the bike started feeling hot and there it was kind of a shit show the transition between the bike and the run um, 
takeaways, one, I didn't give myself enough time to rest in that transition. I, sh I should have taken more time or at least walked the beginning of the beginning of the run. Um, when I finished the bike, I was so overheated. I was just like searching for uh, anything to cool off, like dunking my head like you saw in the cooler, uh, pouring water bottles on my back. I was so overheated. Um, so like that first four miles of the run, I thought I was about the heat stroke. Like that was, that's the closest I've gotten this summer in some sort of training environment. And uh, I just felt like absolute garbage. And then super hyper hydrated, rested for a second, got my bearings straight, and then found my groove. Once I found my groove, I was good. But that first four miles, that was a shit show. Um, so obviously like big takeaways, these are big learning events, obviously. Um, the transition at the full mar Ironman, take more time. And I've actually seen people talk about walking in the beginning just to get your bearings straight, get into the rhythm, find a group, and then move forward. But I, just, I rushed it too fast. Rushed it way too fast. Woo! I'll tell you what, though. This Yeti Kohler is looking pretty attractive. Oh! Check out the sweat marks. Check these out. The sweat marks on my thighs, going up to my crotchal region, um, my arms, my back's probably pretty streaky. Is it streaky? That's a look. Yeah, you got some white marks for sure. So, we broke a little sweat on this, I'll tell you that much. We broke a sweat. I'm pretty dehydrated right now, so that's gonna be the focus tonight. The focus is hydration recovery tonight to keep training and get better for this full marathon, or god damn, full Ironman, November 2nd, 2019, Panama City, Florida. Now let's calculate my times in the truck. It's three hours, 41 minutes. Shit. Yep. Yeah, it's, can't, it has perfect. Um, let's see, three hours, four. So it's 37 plus four plus three. Yeah, okay, overall, uh, the swim was 37 minutes, 20 seconds. The bike was three hours and four minutes. The run was an hour and 57 minutes. There was a, ten, a 15 minute transition between the swim and the bike and a 10 minute transition between the bike and the run. So our total is six hours and three minutes. Six hours, three minutes from a half marathon. Not bad, but we can do better. So let's keep training, like I said, and uh, get prepared for this full Ironman in November.